go before the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Lord, we just want to thank you, oh God, for another day that you've allowed us to see, Lord. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love and kindness, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for your protection, oh God, in the midst of storm, Lord. Lord, we pray for those that are on their way. Allow them to get here swiftly and safely, oh God. Lord, we just thank you for the servant that you have on tonight, oh God. Lord, we pray that you use him in a mighty way, Lord Jesus. Help us to not just be hearers of your word, but help us to be doers of your word, Lord God. Lord, we pray for our leaders in their absence, Lord Jesus. Those that are traveling back home we pray that you give them safe passage Lord, we just thank you for all that you have for us to receive on tonight we give you all glory honor and praise in jesus name amen and now i present to you our bishop bishop george dobbin let's give him a hand as he comes Am I coming? Okay, there we go. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You know what? That uh, greeting that we have really signals something that we're supposed to do. Let's try that one more time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a little bit better. A little bit better. Amen. We thank the Lord tonight for being here. This is a great honor for me. Amen. We do honor the Lord for his grace and his mercy that he has extended to me to be able to come and sit, amen, at my alma mater. Some of you don't know that, do you? This is my alma mater. This is, I was saved under the auspices of Praise Temple of the Apostolic Faith, amen, when we were at 413 South Bloodworth Street in Raleigh under that dynamic leadership of Pastor Marie Deborah Battle. Glory to God. And because of that, amen, I have a lot of things that I have, amen, obtained from her. She is a one that uh, was really a pretty powerful woman of God in the way that she dealt with things and the way that she handled things. You see it in your own pastor. We do honor him today. Amen. He's our council bishop, and he's one that is on the rise quickly in the Pentecostal churches of the Apostolic Faith International in the person of Bishop Vernon L. Spinks. Praise the Lord to him. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We honor the Lord for the staff of ministers that are here at Praise Temple. And, and my adjutant tonight is the Honorable De Deacon. God bless you, Fletcher. Amen. We thank the Lord for you. Now listen, I want you all to understand that I'm a person that I am just happy to be in the midst of God's people. So every now and then I might say something that's a little bit funny, uh, you know, because, you know, I, I have to have a little joy in my heart. Amen. And yet I'm a very serious man. Uh, most people misunderstand me. I'm very serious about my walk with God. I'm very serious about salvation. And I'm very serious about you being saved and staying saved. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 315, the Lord tells us that I give you pastors according to my heart, which will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Now, there are a lot of preachers that come into the midst of God's people. But their job, amen, is to, amen, exhort you, encourage you, and, and make you feel good. And, and like when we go to the convention, you dance and turn in and round back and forth, touch your neighbor and all that kind of good stuff, you know. And, and all those things. We like that. Don't we like it? Y'all may as well come on and say something to me. Yeah, we, we like the, the presence of God, and we love it when we're in the presence of God with God's people. And I want you to know tonight, amen, that we are nothing alone, amen, except the Lord make us something, amen. There is something about being in unity. Oh, how good and pleasant it is for brethren, that talks about the sisters too, to dwell together in what? There you go. Talk to me. Amen. To dwell together in unity. Not fussing, not fighting, amen, not bickering, amen, but to dwell together in in unity and that is one of the things that stays on my heart quite a bit amen and that is that we must be unified amen for a house divided against itself cannot stand and one thing i like to think about is that the church amen is one great big house amen and the church is not just here at 131 guy road 
It's not just amen over at 2034 West Garner Road or any of the other addresses that we have our various sanctuaries. Amen. But the body of baptized believers and the one thing that stands us apart from others is that we should have an added love, a really great love, one for the other. Why is that so important? Because the scriptures teach us that by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for the other. Amen? Let's go to the word of God. I won't be here too long tonight because we're in the midst of a, a tremendous conference taking place in Dallas, uh, Texas. I have three of my children are out there. My great granddaughter is out there. Lord, help me a little while. They're gonna, and they're going to get on the road, my daughter told me, early morning. And she drove out there by herself. And, uh, you know, yeah, isn't that something? But, but, but that's because she loves commingling with the people of God. And this is something that we ought to love too. We ought to love the opportunity to come together. We ought to love the opportunity to see one another. Uh, Sister Smith over here, I remember the first time she showed up at Praise Temple in high school. So, you know, you got grown children now, right? And, and so, you know, when you think about it, those moments are precious to us. And we ought to have that kind of love one to the other that we're just glad to see you. Oh, man, I love it. All right, let's go to the Word of God so I don't bore you too much with my reminiscings. And I got some reminiscings I can lay on you. I can reminisce some things. Can I, get, can I give you one of them? I'm going to give you one right now. Ah, Lord, I love it. Bishop Spinks, amen, I helped to baptize him. Whew. Glory to God. Amen. He and another sister that was pastoring one of our churches later on. Amen. She won him from the behind the counter at Wachovia Bank and Trust. And he was whistling and counting money all the time. And she got him down there because he could sing. You know he can sing. And we got him down to praise temple and prayer was wont to be made. And there the man of God was converted. Amen. And we baptized him along with another brother who's gone on to be with the Lord. As a matter of fact, I think about a number of those people have gone on to be with the Lord now. But amen, we baptized him. And he didn't get the Holy Ghost that day. That was a tough night because First Lady Spinks was not a First Lady then. <laughs> she was standing by. And the next day, though, because we were in revival with evangelists at the time, Martha Hoyt. You know who I'm talking about. She's pastor, amen, in Chicago now. But she had run the revival. The next day, my God, the house was hot. That's why it's important. Don't, don't be so rigid. Don't be so stiff. Don't be so starchy. Go ahead and let God have his way. Amen. When the spirit is moving, go ahead and move with it. And you never know what God is going to do in Jesus' name. Can we say amen? All right. Now, now that we got that out of the way, that was my little reminiscing there. He worked with me for years and years. We worked together. We would entertain the council, Sister Jones, and we would be out there till 1, 2, and 3 o'clock in the morning. Amen. Writing up reports, getting ready. Why did we do that? Because we love the Lord and we love God's people. And you ought to know now that he still loves God's people. Somebody say amen. All right. Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians. Amen. And this is where I will be tonight. I won't be here very long. Amen. But I want to talk a little bit about the need for you in the body of Christ, the unity, amen, of the body in Jesus' name. Can we say amen? All right. It's important that we do that. In the 12th chapter, amen, because a lot of times we are carried away and many people are very impressed with what gifting someone else has, what type of thing they're able to do. Uh, where's my precious heart? She's back there. She does a lot of the praise service, but she's gifted to sing. Come on, somebody. But if you can't sing, that doesn't mean you don't have value in the church. Come on. You got people in here that are, amen, very good administrative-wise. And you may not know how to, to head up a letter, put the heading on it, whatever needs to be on it. But that doesn't mean that you don't have value in the house of God. All right? Now, so there are different gifts that the Lord has given to the church. 
let's look at it in chapter 12, uh, verse number 1, 2, and 3. And I don't know what the custom is for you, but let's read it together. Amen. Chapter 12, 1 Corinthians, verse 1, 2, and 3. We're going to start there, then we'll skip around a little bit. All right? Verse 1 says what? Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Hmm? Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, it is imperative that we understand, amen, first and foremost, that we are all don't have the same gift. I've already alluded to that. Huh? And so he looks at this and he says, you as a Gentile, now, now he's talking to a Gentile population there at the city of Corinth, or at, in Corinth. But when, it, when we refer to the word of God, I like to turn it on ourselves, turn the floodlights from heaven on us. And to know that we had a lot of strange habits, a lot of things that grandma and grandpa taught us and said, this is the way that it is. Some of the old folks said that because of all this thundering and going on, you're not supposed to do anything except go in a corner and sit down and be quiet. Come on, somebody. So, so those are things that, you know, just things that we are carried away with. Now, if we stopped every time it thundered, we wouldn't get a lot of things done. Is that right? Amen. So he says, now, brethren, I don't want you to be carried away with dumb idols or dumb things that you were taught a long time ago. Now, idols were things that they built and made with their own hand and set them in places and they actually bowed down and worshiped them. Come on, somebody. And, and, and does it make sense to worship something that cannot speak for itself? cannot move on its own. Come on. So he said, uh, you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols even as ye were led. That means you were taught to do this. Amen. And many things that we did, we did it ignorantly because we were what? Taught to do this. All right. So he said, now I give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit, and you see that's in my book, is it capitalized spirit? All right. You see, that capital S means it's not just talking about uh, uh, a gifting of the Spirit. Come on. It's actually talking about the Spirit of God. Come on. And each time you see it capitalized in your text, it's going to another level of Spirit. Because when the Holy Ghost come, that is the Spirit of God. All right. And so because of its importance, amen, it has to be capitalized. You must bring recognition to it. All right. So he said, any, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by that spirit, the spirit of God, calleth Jesus what? A curse. And no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by what? The Holy Ghost. In other words, there's a lot of people talking about the Holy Ghost. But have they really got the Holy Ghost? And this is something that we need to be sure is happening in our churches that not only are we talking about the Holy Ghost, but that our individual members are filled with the Holy Ghost. Huh? Because there's a difference in just singing a song and it's got the word the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost down in my soul just like the Bible says. You know, then we go on, we run it with the run. Just like the Bible, just like the Bible said. Now, maybe you all never heard that song, but I heard a lot of that when I was early on coming. All right? So he wants us to understand and know that he is in us, the very God of all glory, by the presence of the Holy Ghost. All right? So he goes on to say in verse 4, now there are diversities. That term talks about differences of gifts, but it is the what? Same spirit. Everybody say same spirit. See, now this is why it's important for you to know that. Because there are different things that each one of you, you may be gifted. Some of you don't even know what you're gifted to do. But I like to think about it in this wise. Amen. It's glad, I'm glad you're here because you help to add an aviance, a fragrance to the house of God. The Lord helped me a little while longer. You know, when you see a bouquet of flowers, it has all kind of flowers that are fixed in there. Come on. 
and, and some of them have a fragrance. Some don't have much of anything at all. There's a little white budded flower called a baby's breath. Anybody familiar with that? All right. And, and, and I've seen a lot of women use baby breath in a lot of different ways. Little, just a little white. Almost looks artificial. huh? But it adds something to the bouquet. You add something to the body of Christ. You may not be able to, I, I would say what one of, my, one of my men said. He said, I'm so good looking that, you know, I can't hardly stand myself. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say that tonight. But, but, you know, sometimes, you know, you may not be able to add what I add. Come on, somebody. I was a technician by trade. And there was a lot of things that I knew how to do. When we went to corner of East and Lane Street in Raleigh, so it's the road that's where you got saved at. Nobody wanted to crawl under the church but me. Nobody wanted to go. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all don't know though. That nobody was that wanted to get up there and mess with those electrical wires. But I did it. Come on. But then God had blessed me to be able. I had been trained, and I brought that to the church, and I wasn't afraid to work with what I was trained in for the body of Christ. You follow what I'm saying? So what you have. You may have learned something someplace other than here, but you are here now in the body of Christ. And God wants you to add some flavor, some audience, amen, to the church at large. Can you say amen? All right. So he said, now there are differences of gifts. One can do one thing and one can do another. And there are diversities or differences uh, of operations, but it is the same God which worketh what? All in all. So whatever you're able to do to bless the house of God through your labors, through your work, through your knowledge, it is God that's working in you to do of his good pleasure. You agree with me tonight? If you don't, I'm still going to go right on through here. So he says there are different administrations, but it's the same Lord. Then he says in verse number 7, but the manifestation... That term helps us to know something. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all or with all, with everyone. All of us need to be able to profit by the gifting that you have. Can I say that again? All of us in the body of Christ need to be able to profit from the gifting that you have. Come on. You know, there are some things that only you can do, and I've already alluded to that, that only you can bring to pass. Only you can bring, uh, there's one passage of scripture that says, who can bring a good thing out of the evil thing? You are that person that God has called out of darkness into this marvelous light that you might bring forth something that nobody else is capable of doing. Can you say amen, somebody? There, 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 there are different gifts, and, and, and I won't try to get into all of those gifts tonight. But one important thing in the house of God is that we need to have someone that has, amen, a word of wisdom. Can I, you know what that means? That means don't get carried away. Don't be crazy about various things. Now, I have to be careful how I use that term crazy because my wife said, where did you find that word at in the Bible? I didn't find it in the Bible, so, you know, that was one of the words we picked up somewhere along the line. But, but, <laughs> but it's important for us to know that somebody needs to have some wisdom. Sometimes there's someone that is crying, and they may be going through something. You don't have any real knowledge of what they're going through. Come on, somebody. But someone with a word of wisdom will be able to tell them it's going to be all right. And just by them saying that, it changes the whole dynamic to where they feel just that much better. I think I, thank you. And they may not even tell you thank you like they feel it, but they, they say, all right, they said it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. That word of wisdom. So he said the manifestation, the, 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 the putting forth of what God has put in you via the Holy Ghost is given to every man to profit with everybody else in the body of Christ. Now, don't think about it in terms of, you know, if you got blessed and have a lot of money, that you're supposed to give them some money. That's not what it's talking about. 
unless the Lord lay it on your heart to do that. Huh? For to one is given by the Spirit. See, that's that capital S again. Y'all see it in your book? For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. That was the thing I just alluded to. To another, the word of knowledge. By what? The same Spirit. Somebody say same Spirit. Same Spirit. See, so when you get the Holy Ghost, let me give you how Pastor Battle used to teach that. And she was one. Now, now if I offend some, please don't take it as though I'm offensive and want to offend you. Some people don't believe in, you know, celebrating Christmas and giving gifts and things. But she said, like at Christmas time, you might get a big Christmas package. And inside that package is a number of gifts. That's the way Pastor Battle used to explain it. And I thought, ingenious. That's the way to look at it. And when you open up the big package, let's refer to the big package as the Holy Ghost. Inside the big package is a lot of smaller gifts that are just as valuable to you as the big, because the big package may have a big bow on it. Come on, somebody. But, but inside is a lot of small packages may not have a bow at all. Come on now. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge. How? By the same Spirit. To another, what? Faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by what? The same Spirit. So listen, just because one is able to lay hands and something happens, and you're not laying hands and nothing's able to happen on that wise, does not mean that God has not blessed you or anointed you with something that's valuable to the body of Christ. Am I getting through out there? Because I, I, there are too many times we celebrate a few things that an individual has done, amen, not realizing that the same God that blessed them is also blessing you. Come on. And when you look at it, you see, oh, thank you, Lord. I appreciate that. So he says, to another, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles, huh? And, and, you know, that's just what I mean. You would think that miracle working, amen, is just reserved for somebody you got to call from out of town. They got to come and lay hands and rub you down in oil, push you down on the floor. Come on, somebody. When you study what Jesus did, there was a man that had a daughter that was sick. And the man said, Lord, you're not even worthy. I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. And he said, well, go on. And I'm going to talk like we talk. Well, go home and check on her. And when he checked on her, the daughter was healed. He said, what time was it when she was healed? And he realized it was at the same time that the Lord had spoke the word to him. Listen, if we trust God like we ought to trust him, things will happen in our life through us and for us and for others. Can you say amen, somebody? Glory to God. There are some of you, amen, that wanted husbands and wives. Where's my deacon? Say amen, deacon. Glory to God. And God gave him one of those high, high proficiency ones. Look at how I described this, sister. No, don't pay attention to me on that stuff. I love you. I love the Lord. I, 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 I watched the wedding. I, I appreciate you inviting me, man. Some people don't invite me to those things. But <laughs> she got down there and prayed. I was moved by your sincerity. And if he don't treat you right, you let us know. We'll take him around back and take care of him. All right. That's my friend. To another, amen, working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. Does everybody, you know, some type of people can walk into the midst of wherever we are and pick up some kind of spirit. What's going on with them? And I don't know what your wife would do, but my wife does that. She can do that. Uh, Deacon Fletcher it makes me nervous because so, I say I better be sure I know how to talk to her. Because she'll ask me real quick, say, oh, aren't we grumpy today? <laughs> this, is, this is the gifting of God. And if you will humble when God is working, you will humble yourself right on down. 
she catches me, makes me shut my mouth, and then I think about it because I'm the man, you know. And, and, and I, you don't have to, you know, I don't have to broadcast and say I'm a man here. I know who I am. <laughs> but I'm also a man of God. And the Bible teaches us that except we become like little children and humble ourselves, we shall in no wise enter in. And, and this is something that we don't get a lot of teaching on in the church today. But it's time for us as a people of God to be willing and ready to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Because if you don't do that, there's no use thinking about going higher and getting to be great in Christ. Can we say amen? All right. And so uh, this is important that we know these things. And it's important that this gifting is working in the body of Christ. Now, it's not something that she should get and stand up before the pulpit and say, all right, uh, I'm just going to call a few names. I know a lot of names, but uh, Deacon Jones, I'm just going to call you. All right, Deacon Jones, you need to humble yourself. Now, that's not your place. That's the pastor's place to reprove, rebuke with all long suffering and what? Doctrine. Somebody say that's the pastor's place. Come on, y'all, man. Well, come on and get with That's the pastor's place. Because sometimes we want to get bold and going to jack somebody up ourselves. Loose me here. Thank you, uh, Deacon Fletcher. You're not mad at me either. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. He's, he's my friend. <laughs> God bless you. Amen. So he says then, but these work it that one and the self same spirit. Huh? One self same capital S spirit. It's by the Holy Ghost that these things work. Dividing to every man severally as he will. You, you got something in you, but you need to keep praying and find out what the Lord would have you to do with it, how he would have you to work it. Come on. Can I, can I head some people off at the pass? Some, some people know that they get a gifting and they want to, you know, they want to be the headliner. All the time. Oh, God, help us. When it's time, God will call for you, and you will know that it's time for you to step forward. Huh? But some people, you know, they get, they get, can I dare say it? I got a big head myself naturally. But some people get big head, you know, thinking they're all that and the bag of chips. It may just be the bag of chips making a lot of noise, you know. So let us, let us consider all of these things. Now look at what he said. Now this is where I really want it to be tonight because Christ's temple, praise temple, these are my heart throbs. I started Christ's temple. I was saved in praise temple. Come on. And these are my heart throb. Verse 12 is really what the Lord kept putting on my spirit. For as the body is one and hath many members and all the members of that one body being many are what? One body. Everybody say one body. So also is Christ. He's not a divided up God. He's not a divided up, amen, entity. Come on, somebody. The same God that works here works there. He works in Rocky Mount. He works in Durham. Come on, somebody. And we ought to recognize the workings of God. And when we have the opportunity to be of support and bless one another, then we ought to do that. Come on, somebody. For as the body is one. And he goes down through here, and he talks about the varying parts of the body. And if you think about it, if those entities or if those parts of the body that are mentioned in here were missing, what good would you be? Lord help us. Verse 13 says, for by one spirit, there's that capital S again, are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles. Now, and here again, this letter is written to the Jewish people that are in Corinth, but he wants them to know that Gentiles are being saved also. 
They are coming in. And they are coming in with various things that are in their makeup. Just like our church. Amen. We have people that come from the north side, south side, far north, deep south. Come on, somebody. Uh, we all have a little bit of differences. It's small differences. It's nothing to get all crazy about. There's that word crazy again. It's nothing to get all carried away with. My wife is from the low country in South Carolina. A lot of pretty women down there, man. But I didn't marry her because of looks. I wanted to know if there was a woman that was born again in the apostolic way, huh? That loved the Lord. Now, this woman that I chose, I went to her pastors, talked to her, talked to him. Amen. He, she was from one of our churches. So I had a good grasp of what was in her. Just kind of give you some background on it. Uh, because some people think that, well, you see, she's a light complexion woman. Some, oh, yeah. Some people say, well, see, he's just like light-skinned women. Lord, help us a little while long. And I do know men that will not talk to women that are not the color they prefer. Huh? But I was looking for an inward thing. An inner personality. Someone that had been born again of water and of spirit. Someone that was willing to stand on the word of God. Amen. Whether she thought I was right or wrong. She'll, she'll, she'll take her stance against the bishop. Isn't that something? <laughs> the elder saw you. Pray for me, man. <laughs> but that's the woman that I chose. And I love her. Come on, y'all. And I honor you tonight. Thank you for taking all this from me. Y'all give her a nice hand praise. See, if Bishop Stallworth can do this, I can do it too. Some of you didn't even know who Bishop Stallworth was. How many knew Bishop Stallworth? Look at the Lord help us. We're the only ones in here that knew him. He, every time he got up, he was talking about Mary and what she did. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, I, these people were my mentors, and they were from way back when. God has helped us. Amen. And he gave me someone that would talk to me. Come on, somebody. And she has gifting in her. Come on, y'all. And, 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 and I'm grateful for the gifting that is in her. What do you think of the gifting that is in your brothers and sisters in Christ? Do you get big-headed and say, oh, they think they something just because they can do this and that? Do you, do you, do, do you make a big to-do because Sister Christian is leading the, the praise team and her husband is over there on the keyboard and with the musical instrument? He, she thinks she's something. I'm working tonight, Christian, so you might as well just don't say nothing. Just let me work. Because every now and then you'll have people that think like this. And, and I'm against those that war against one another in the body of Christ. Are you with me tonight? Glory to God. And so it look at this and we realize that if we just humble ourselves on down and let the Lord help us, then we're going to be a mighty warring faction that will be able to win, amen, the Clayton area, the Garner area, all of greater Raleigh, amen, if we do it, like God say, do it. Can you say amen? amen? All right. He said, for by one spirit, are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into what? One spirit. Everybody say one spirit. Now, wouldn't it be something if you had brothers and sisters and they, you didn't have the same blood makeup? Mmm. I'm talking about on a natural level. And on, you know, uh, I, I always have examples. One of my members said, Pastor, why you always got so many examples? Because I'm now in my 70s, so you know, I, I've, seen a, <laughs> I've seen a few things. <laughs> I have a brother that was not part of the, the whole clan when we were coming up. And we used to look at this guy. And because there's a strong family resemblance in my family, uh, Dr. Brown, uh, 
He said, that guy must be uncle so-and-so's son or, or this uncle's son. That's, we were so sure. He looked so much like him. Then when the, 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 when the paperwork started coming out, somebody said, your brother's up there. I went at the church. He was at the church. I said, what brother? I didn't see my brother. I went, I was looking at the in-house group. But what I'm saying to you is that blood don't lie. And the blood of Jesus don't lie either. If the blood of Jesus has been applied to your life, come on somebody, then you are going to have characteristics. You're going to have traits like the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. You'll be able to, to endure things and you'll be able to see things and you'll be able to say, all right, the Lord's will be done. Come on. And so then he goes on to tell us here, and again, we're in this 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians, the body, the body has many members and all the members of that one body being many, still just one body, so also is Christ. Verse 14 says, for the body is not one member, but what? Many. Everybody say many. many. Wouldn't it be something if all of us, all we could do was just shout? Uh-oh. Some, pe some people think that's, that's it for salvation. Lord, let me shout. And, and the thing that, 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 that amazes me, and, I, and I'm going get to you, get you out of here so y'all can see the rest of the conference. If you pay attention to the conference, there's so many dancing that's the same. And I know we learn from one another, Sister Rhoda, but I said, well, it seems like there ought to be somebody got something a little bit different. You know, uh, I remember, uh, here, I go, here I go again, remembering, Pastor Battle took us to a church in Fayetteville, and everybody looked like they were doing the mashed potatoes. Now, oh, now I know you don't know what that is, but that, I said, Lord, have mercy. Everybody doing the same thing. Come on now. <laughs> now, it, it is imperative that we know that God works in us. For the body is not one member, but many. I got one mother at the church. She can't do all that fancy footwork like some people do. And mother just gets up and goes for a walk. And I'm with you, mother. Go for that walk, girl. I'm going to walk with you because I got to the point now where about all I can do is walk at time. It's a struggle. Glory to God. So he said, if the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Now that's a ridiculous question. But there are some that think that because individuals are not like them or not like their particular group, that they are not really saved. They really don't have it. Brothers, don't judge one another like that. Judge no thing before time. Don't you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if it's going to be about dancing, whew, I don't know. I better back off of that one anyway. Mm, 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 mm. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Wouldn't, it, wouldn't we look odd if all we had was ears and no eyes? Come on. Wouldn't we look odd if all we had was eyes and no ears? Come on. And we know that from time to time there's some unnatural things happen. But the base thing is, is that we basically are pretty much the same. Verse 16 or 17. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? Hmm? And if the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Come on. And, and you need to have all of these senses working. For you in your natural body. And of course if they're not working then you just kind of hang on. And there will be some training to teach you how to do some other things. Because you have shortcomings in this area. Come on. But now have God set the members. Every one of them. Look at your neighbor and say you're special. Oh come on stop being nervous. I declare. 
Now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath what? Pleased him. He didn't put them in there to please you. He put them in there to please him. God is saying, I have need of this one. I have need of this one. Come on, somebody. As it hath pleased him. I had a conversation just the other day with a young person. And they were extremely concerned about, they said, I do not want to hurt my father. And that's not somebody in here, so don't start looking around. <laughs> I talk to a lot of people. I have a lot of things. But the thing is, is that I was pleased that they thought enough of their parents who were in Christ to not want to hurt them. What about you and I? How much do we think of our parents? Your father or your mother, amen, have extended great energy to raise you. Come on. When you didn't know anything about washing yourself, they would take care of you, wash you. I had a, my, my first granddaughter, amen, she would, she would suffer with seizures. And my daughter, who birthed her, didn't know what to do. She'd just go, <gasps> herself. She'd almost have a seizure because the daughter would have a seizure. But my wife at the time would take her, Elder Sawyer, said, bring that baby here and bring that baby there and, and start working and bring her right on out of that seizure. I'll never forget. Uh, I had to come out of my bed one night to go get that baby whew, rushing all across town, Sister Rhoda. Not too far from where you used to live, come to think of it. Got the baby, brought the baby home, and my wife worked on him, and the baby was, and when she got through with it, the baby opened her eyes and said, hey, <laughs> I'm saying to you that these elderly people that loved us like they did brought us through many things. So you should never want to harm them, bring bad karma on them. huh? You should want them to, to be proud of the fact, that's my baby. 28, 29, 40 years old. That's still my baby. Mm. Glory to God. Going back to the text. But now have God set the members, every one of them in the body. We just got through saying it. As it hath pleased who? Him. As it hath pleased God. And if they were all one member, where were the body? So you have a unique place. He has learned through the ways that she has operated to get around she comes around in the church. She get close to me. And she, all right, pastor. All right, bishop. You know, and I want to think, did you see me or what? <laughs> she has learned how to operate with those other members that are in her body. How to get around. How to move around. Come on, somebody. And if we are to look at what she's able to do, what can God do with the church if we would allow him to work in us? We are helpers one of the other. Do you agree with me tonight? Amen. I, I hope I'm not saying something that's strange to you. Glory to God. Verse 21 says, And I cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of thee. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Now he's talking, amen, in a natural sense and understanding natural things. huh? If there are individuals that seem to need help, I need help nowadays. I got people that want to help me so much, I don't want them to help me. <laughs> but, but they want to help me because I'm feeble at times. Deacon Jones, I'm feeble. As I walk with my cane, I walk with my little walker. I told one doctor, I said, I just want to be able to get around like these 80 and 90-year-old folk. I'm not there yet. And, and, and I'm struggling and you know, wobbling and all that kind of stuff. But I hope they are helping me because they love me. You know, all right. Now somebody said, yeah, they love me. So, all right, I feel better now. It's not about pitying me. It's about loving one another. All right? So I can't say to the hand, I have no need of thee, nor the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more, those members of the body who seem to be more feeble are necessary. Everybody say necessary. 
And you know what's, what I, I come to understand about that? God does things in a different way than we do. Amen. Sometimes in order for us to appreciate something, we must struggle with it. We must have tough interaction with it. Come on, somebody. Amen. And so the Lord allows us, amen, to go through something to test whether or not we have patience, to test whether or not our love is for real. Come on, somebody. And, so, and if you would judge yourself, for the book tells us further on in this same chapter or this same book of Corinthians in the 11th chapter, which was an earlier chapter, he said, but let a man examine himself. Glory to God. You know, uh, I, I imagine that they still read it down here at communion time. We were taught that from the early days of Praise Temple. Let a man examine himself. Huh? I may not see what you're doing, but you know what you're doing. Amen. We used to have a sign at the place that I used to work said, I am the one that is with me all of the time. So I am the one that is most responsible for my actions. What are you saying? Amen. I know what I've done. I know where I've been. Come on. I don't need you to try to find and pick on me and try to, try to find that. Just be honest with yourself. Glory to God. He said, nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble, seem to have problems. Those members of the body which we think to be less honorable. Upon these we bestow what? More abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. In other words, sometimes we like to think, ooh. I don't want to get there. I don't want to go there. I'll, I'll, I'll find another way to do it. For our comely parts have no need. But God have tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacketh. If we have within the church those that seem to not be able to make it on their own, they don't seem to know how to go about, amen, giving God glory, in their walk with God, if you must have unity. There are five traits that I want to mention as I get ready to close about unity tonight. The number one thing, amen, that I've already alluded to is humility. Humble yourself. Stay humble. Stay low. He that humbleth himself, God will exalt him in due season. Don't be the one, amen, that's always, I know how and I, I got it better than anybody else. Stay humble. Humility, amen, has to do with not thinking of yourself as better than others. It's the opposite of pride, huh? You bring yourself down and you learn how to tell the Lord, thank you, huh? There's such a thing as false humility, too. So don't fool yourself. That's why I say you take heed to yourself. One writer said, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Take heed to the word of God. Y'all know what doctrine is. It's the study of God's word. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. For in so doing, you shall save not only yourself, but them that hear you also. If your whole world revolves around you, you're proud. I'm going to say that again. If your whole world revolves around you, you're proud. Doting and know nothing. Everything's got to be like you think it ought to be. Come on, somebody. That's kind of tight, isn't it? But stay low. Second thing, be gentle, kind one to another. Huh? Sometimes people make mistakes, and before you know it, you done bit their head off. That's the literal saying. Don't snap them up. Don't, don't, don't be so quick to, to pull the trigger. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. I'm going to blow you up. No, don't do that. Love on them. They may not have even known that they had offended you. All right? Gentleness has to do with considering others. Huh? Forfeiting, forfeiting your rights. Many people think only of themselves today. Huh? Sadly, these attitudes have crept into the church. And you see it from time to time. You just don't know that it's there. Sometimes you, the way you hold your head tells a story. That special outfit you got on tells a story. Wow. 
Whew. I, I, will I be able to get out of here tonight, Fletcher, saying things like that? Whew. And I look at some of them, and I see them. And I said to my wife, I hope you all, how many are watching the, the tapes, I mean, watching the live stream of the convention? I see three hands, four, five hands. I was going to say, y'all better turn your... <laughs> I said to my wife, see, because she's the one I can talk to in, in private, you know, and, uh, you know, you can say things. I said, wow, it's a pretty girl, but if she would learn to smile and act like she's somewhat happy, it would just light up the whole platform. You know? Oh, come on, y'all. All right, then, I'm an old guy. So what did Bishop Gates say? That uh, I'm wired to, to look? Did y'all catch? Some of you didn't even catch that, did you? <laughs> All right. Third thing, let's, let's have some patience. You got to have patience with me. The scripture said, you have need of patience. That after you have done the will of God, that you might inherit the prize. You might receive it. Come on. But if you don't have patience, you won't wait on God to give you what you need to have. Patience. Everybody said patience. Fourth, love. God both displayed and defined love for us all at the cross. At the cross, at the cross. You know, he didn't have to do what somebody said, but he did. We didn't love him, but he loved us. Come on, somebody. So these kinds of things. Love is the soil in which we are established and grow in Christ. Do, do you get that? Love is the soil. You know, when you're a horticulture person, you want to make sure that the ground you're planting something in is rich enough, has the type of mineral substance to produce what you are growing. Love is the thing that causes you to produce here in the church, and it causes your church to produce. Do, 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 you, ever, you ever had the time when people walk in and say, oh, I like what I feel here. Oh, come on, y'all. Stop acting like y'all. That didn't ever happen. All right. God both displayed and defined love for us at the cross. Love is important for us. If the spirit of Christ dwells in us, we will be loving people ourselves. So if you're not loving one another, if you're not loving the stranger that comes into your midst, if you're not loving those that are seeking the Lord, you've got to question your own salvation. Come on. Finally, zeal. We are to be zealous to maintain the unity of the spirit and do it in the bond of peace. Amen. We ought to want, amen, others to be saved. We ought to want to do something good in the body of Christ. You know, uh, uh, David, amen, had those mighty men of valor. And when he uh, uh, listed those men of valor, he talked about, a certain group of them, when he was, you know, he was locked down. And he said, oh, that I could just have some water, amen, from the wells. You know, and, and, and he thought about it. He just reminisced about it. He didn't ask anybody to go, but he just thought about it. And the next thing you know, he had some mighty men of that. I, I wish I could get up and run like I used to. Get up and they were gone, running, putting their lives in jeopardy for the king. Let's love on one another as God has given it to us to love one another. Amen. Do it with zeal. Don't say, well, I guess if I have to, I'll have to. But no, love on one another. Be zealous. Be very zealous one for another. And let God help you. Amen. In Jesus' name. I'm stopping tonight. I could go on and talk about a lot of things, but my people say I get kind of carried away with a lot of reminiscing and stuff. So, you know, I'm going to stop tonight any questions from anyone tonight any questions from anyone here tonight all right do you understand the concept of being unified in the body of Christ if you don't think you're needed ask me I'll tell you I need you I remember the old Baptist preacher said uh, Elder Brown 
when we were at the church down in the country, and uh, they were getting ready to fire him. <laughs> and, and I didn't understand. He said, I need you, and you need me. And I thought that was all it was about at that time. But as I grew in Christ, got saved, and I started to grow in Christ, there's a real need that we have for one another. Unity. Unity. Look at your neighbor and say, let's be unified. Don't, 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 don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. Just look at the other one too and say, let's be unified. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you tonight, Lord, for allowing us this time to come together with your special people. And we pray tonight, Lord, that we, words have been spoken, something has been said, that someone will have another mind, another heart to go forward in your way. Strengthen us, O oh God. Strengthen us together, for we are in need of one another. Help us, Lord, to recognize the need and our place in the body of Christ. I thank you now for the pastor here. My God, even as he works on the field, bless this people. Keep them together. Keep them with a mind stayed steadfastly on thee. I thank you for what you are doing. Now have thine own way. and I thank you for what you are doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Give the Lord a nice hand praise, everybody. Give the Lord a nice hand praise. We're going to put it back into the hands of the pastor in charge tonight. That's Elder Brown. Yeah, you're in charge tonight, man. You feel the weight of it? <laughs> oh. You know what? When the pastor gives you that, that charge, just go for it. I'm going to say that to everybody. When the pastor gives you that charge, go for it. God bless you in Jesus. God bless you, Suffolk and Bishop Dalvin. And, and didn't, didn't we feast on the word tonight? Give God a hand of praise for our teacher tonight. And give the Lord a hand of praise that you're in the body. Hey, Amen. I'm glad to be in the body. I don't know what part I have, it, but if I'm the toenail, I thank God for being the toenail. Because <laughs> I, I could be out in the world of sin, but we thank God. For that, was, that was wonderful, wonderful teaching tonight. And I hope that your hearts was enlightened and he was able to stir up our pure minds by way of remembrance. There's nothing new, nothing strange, but he came from the word of God, and I thank God for that. And uh, we have many ways that you can give. If you want to partner with us in your giving, you can give tonight. You can text to give. You can text 84321, or you can scan the QR code. I've been meaning to try that to see if my phone would see that far. <laughs> but you can also go on the, the church's website you can give through cash app dollar sign praise temple nc or if you're in the house today you can certainly uh give by way of cash we we take checks that that stay grounded and uh <laughs> and we also have uh means for you to give by card if you uh, want to do so. But however you give, stand up and give it in Jesus' name. And uh, the, uh, we'll hear our announcements while we are giving. Praise the Lord, Praise Temple. As always, it's wonderful to see you here in the house of the Lord. To stay updated on our regular events, be sure to stop by the church website or the church center app. And now for our special upcoming events. The Mobile Food Market is this Saturday at 10 a.m. Volunteers should arrive at 8 a.m. to help with unloading the boxes and staging the food. Our Women's Forum is sponsoring a community yard sale during the Mobile Market this summer. The sale begins at 8 a.m. and it's a wonderful opportunity to declutter the church, find essential items at low prices, and support our community efforts. All proceeds from the yard sale will find our community initiatives at Praise Temple. We hope to see you there. Attention church family, starting on July 8, 2024, Faith at Home is kicking off our Faith Walk. Remember to complete the weekly Faith Walk activity worksheet in your Life Conference folder. 
We want you to share your family's faith walk journey weekly with pictures and testimonies by emailing media at praisetemple.org. For questions, see Minister Nicole Johnson. Let's grow together in faith. Thank you for your attention and God bless.